Hi guys, it's me Karen and welcome back to my channel. Oops. Today I'm going to show you that it's something I got in the mail and I want to send a thank you out to the person who sent it and I'm not sure who it is because there wasn't no um, card with it so thank you very much for sending it. It was on my wish list and I don't know how many people have seen this but if you see here it says panoramic uh, fold out to color, color nature. It's one of these books that opens up and they have different titles here so if you're interested in one of these books you can look up the um, different titles. There's one of um, fairies, one in Paris, one nature, one, um, let's see if I can get a little closer, Knights, London, New York, Dragons, and mid <laughs> medieval. So all of those books here come in this kind of uh, fold out. It all begins with this line. The line goes in many places and um, you'll notice that when I open it, color it or don't color it and make mistakes, make it on your own, display it, show it, share it, but first just look. So <laughs> This gives you a hint of what the book is going to come out to look like. <laughs> you can use um, different, it's a really kind of a thick paper so I'm pretty sure water will fit on here. Um, maybe markers, I'm not sure, but it is a fold out. So we have a beautiful little owl here and then it folds out this way and you have some more animals. On the back of this, it'll tell you what kind of animals are on there. So that it'll give you the name, the, um, hmm, what do you call this? This is the common name. This is the biological name. Anyway, so if you don't care that this gets used, you can probably use alcohol markers on this because it is a one-sided um, picture. So owl some deer then we have some pheasants and some butterflies we've got some birds down in here we have a forest in the background here now that is all in <laughs> the frame but it won't be in a few minutes because we have to keep opening because <laughs> it keeps going here we have a fox and um i believe that's a little mouse here and a bird so it will still keep going. <laughs> this goes across my whole desk, by the way. So we have birds here, and then we have some bunnies and a lizard, more butterflies, more flowers, and then we have a little frog <laughs> and some more birds. So if you take this one panel at a time, it won't be as overwhelming as it is when you open the book and go, oh my goodness, there is so much here to color. So if you do just the birds, just keep your, um, if you want to show this off as a whole panel, kind of go through and do all the sky the same. Um, if you're going to do like a green background here, you got to carry the green background kind of all the way through, just keeping that in mind. But, oh, this is a awesome book. <laughs> And I liked the nature one because I like, of course, the nature scenes with the animals in it. So we'll just keep going through here. Get that microphone thing out of the way. So if I count them, single pictures, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them total. And it does go out quite large. So I think this would be one of those that you would color um, and leave out on a desk or something for when people come over. Other side, like I said, it tells you the animals' names, like the swallow. So you can look them up and find out uh, it's a red fox if you want to color him red. It tells you the names of the flowers also. So you have the fox glove the um, oxide daisy, the little lizard here, 
We have a field poppy, uh, hawthorn leaves. We have ivy. We have oh, a wren here, red admiral butterfly. So for me, that is wonderful. There is a line here, so the poster isn't on one complete sheet. It actually has to be glued together here. So you'll see that on this side. The other side, it's right in the seam. You won't notice it. So we have a dog rose, a crab apple, a dark lipid <laughs> banded a snail. Yay, I didn't even see a snail. <laughs> I love snails. A uh, common butterfly here, the devil's bit uh, scarbius. Kind of a puff flower. Wild Angelica, the Hawthorn, and we have the uh, fallow deer here, and we have the little hedgehog. I didn't see a hedgehog in there either, so. And they come in seasons, so each one of these is a different season. So I'm guessing you would just, uh, that's the whole C uh, here. You could follow your green only to so far, because your seasons will change the uh, backgrounds, but the sky could all be the same. Okay, sorry I had a phone call. And what I was saying was, this is the whole scene going across here, and since it is uh, four seasons, the sky can be the same, but your backgrounds might have to change into winter, fall, summer, spring type thing. But it'll look really pretty. And down here it says, now to take the next step to draw some wildlife uh, yourself using the grid to help you copy this swallow. And if you've never done a, a grid copying before, what it is is we have a light grid here and you just take one square at a time and draw what's in that square. So you would draw kind of like a little sail up here. Next grid portion you just go down and put a little shading in here. So you draw a line that connects to that little sail up there and a little piece here and then just work your way down the squares on all of them. And if your line connects, you just make sure it connects. I won't be doing that right now, but <laughs> maybe at some point I will. It'll be fun to try. This one over here is then try a freehand in nature scene of your own, and you can draw a nice little picture here if you so wish. Which I uh, might or might not do. I need a lot of practice before I do that. Again, these are the other books that they have. And that is the end of the book. Does it go? Nope, it goes this way. <laughs> Fold out here. Um, this one is called Col Coloring Nature, featuring the artwork celebrated illustrator Helen Ward. So, um, you can just look up the Coloring Nature Helen Ward on it, and you will find out all of the other books, too. They'll just kind of list them all. But I want to thank you so much for this book. It's really pretty. I'm going to have fun coloring in this one. And there was one other thing that I purchased that I thought I would show everybody. This is a uh, Distress Crayon. I've been um, asked if I have ever used these, and no, I had not. And I picked one. <laughs> color to buy. <laughs> this is the Victorian velvet color and I thought I would um, try it out. You know, it is a crayon. It twists, I think. I have no idea how it comes up. I'm assuming it twists. Yeah, okay. It's not really that difficult, but it twists up. You get quite a few uh, inches in there. I assume it goes all the way to the bottom. The color, like I said, is Victorian Velvet, which is an ink that I use a lot of. And I thought I could grab a piece of paper here. Hold on. There we go. We'll just take it and color on there. It's really smooth. Um, 
It's water soluble, by the way. Adult use only keep out of reach of children. Non toxic made in China by Ranger. Tim Holtz. Okay, that's all the information it's going to give me here. It's a waxy base crayon. <laughs> that is water soluble, and we're going to get a water brush. This is a Pentel water brush in a medium or big or something. I'll make sure it works. And then we'll add some water to this side over here. And yeah, it activates with water. Lightens up the color. You can smush it around quite a bit. Um, I'm going to put some on a plastic sheet. Let's see if that works any better. So we'll just grab why these are really smushy. Okay, we're going to take some up and see if we can paint it on. That's probably a better way to use it in a coloring book. That's kind of cool. I was just going to see if you smush that if it moves with your finger. It does not. Well, it kind of did a little bit here. But not too much. I like how it lays down when you put it on a plastic sheet more than trying to, you know, work your way into that. This is really a uh, textured paper. It is not smooth at all. <laughs> Let's see if I can find something that's... Well, I don't really have anything on my desk that's smooth. Oh, hold on a second. All right, this is a piece of uh, Nina Classic Crest Solar White 110 cardstock. Smooth. So we're going to put a little of this on here. And uh, put a little bit more over here. These remind me of kind of like a um, wax pastel. So this is how it works on a smooth surface. Okay, this is not a watercolor surface or anything. This is just cardstock. Still like the way it comes up off the uh, plastic. And since this one is dry over here, see if we can make it a thicker coat by putting more on, and you can won't reactivate it once it's dry. So, awesome. I will probably use this uh, on a background. I don't know how um, how it'll uh, last is what I'm saying. Uh, like the Distress Ink can last a long time. You can just keep using it and re-inking it. These cost what did I pay for this? Oh, let me double check so I don't get it wrong. Bought this one off of eBay from a seller that I usually um, buy stuff from. And yeah, <laughs> these are not cheap. This here is that I paid for it was $5.69 for one crayon. Um, you can buy these in sets, and the sets I thought were kind of pricey too. And they come in, you know, different colors. So if you are specifically after a color, it's better to buy it as an open stock piece. But, you know, $5.60, if it, even if it goes all the way down, I don't know how long this is going to last. Um, Neo colors are not quite as creamy as this. So when you're laying color down, you can seem to waste a lot of it. So I'm going to be using it on a plastic sheet, but I will do a background in this one. You'd probably in a Magical Dawn, because that's one of the colors I use in there. But yeah, that's what that does. So we will try that out. 
Thank you so much for the book. I really appreciate it. We'll have fun with that one. And I will see you in the next video. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Take care, everyone. Bye now.